So Tracy saved over $49,000 on taxes in 2022 using S Corporation. So if you think that just because you converted to an S Corporation and you can save money on taxes only on self-employment taxes, you are completely wrong. You see, S Corporation has other benefits attached to it and other tax strategies that only can be used with an S Corporation. So in this video, I am going to uncover those same tax strategies that Tracy, our tax advisory client, used on her taxes in 2022, and I will hold nothing back. Ready? Let's go. Hey, welcome to my whiteboard tax strategy. My name is Boris Mushek. I'm a CPA and a tax strategist. Every Tuesday, I release a tax strategy video for business owners like yourselves to help you save money on taxes. So please go ahead and hit the subscribe button, the bell notification button. Please like this video if you really like it, share it and check out the description below for more resources that are put together for business owners just like yourself. Now, let's get to my whiteboard for more tax strategy. All right, let's get rolling. Let's talk about Tracy, our tax advisory client. Now, what I'm gonna do in this video is I've actually broken down each tax strategy that we used for her on her 2022 taxes, each deduction associated with this strategy. And the best thing is that I've also put down the savings for you. The reason I did all of this to you, first of all, I wanna show you what that tax strategy is, how much it was in deduction, and what it generated in tax savings giving her $49,000 in tax savings for 2022. Now, before we get to it, let's talk about who is Tracy and why am I even doing a video about Tracy? Yeah, now, first of all, um, what is it that made her save $49,000 on taxes? So Tracy is our tax advisory client since 2018. Yes, in 2018, Tracy got in touch with me and she's like, hey, Boris, Look, I've got a single mom, I've got a growing tax practice, and I've also got a growing tax bill. And it looks like what I need is tax planning and tax advisory. Can you help me? I said, yeah, absolutely can. We talked about some details and she was on the fence. She's like, you know what? I'm gonna take a leap of faith here and make this investment with you because I do believe that you can save me money on taxes. I said, hey, you've got nothing to worry about. We'll do tax planning and provide you with year-round tax advisory services so, so that you can save money on tax. And look, we do this for her. By the way, we do this for her every year. Every year she saves in five digits in her taxes, right? I said, 2022, another $49,000 saved. You know, I said, you know what? We're gonna do a case study for our YouTube fans and share with them exactly what went on and what tax strategies was you were used for Tracy. Now, before I continue with each single tax strategy right here, a quick commercial break. Hey, Boris Mushev here. Sorry for the quick interruption. Five seconds, I promise. I wanna make sure you get your free PDF, seven write-offs every S Corporation business owner must know. The link to this free PDF is in the description below. That's it. Thank you so much. Continue watching. Hey, all right, awesome. So welcome back and let's get to it. The way I've broken that, this down for you is that I have her income for 2022 and then we also have income before and after and all the tax strategies. So in 2022, her gross income was about $700,000. Now, you as a business owner know that gross income is all income before any expenses. So we've got $700,000. Her net profit plus her owner's salary was $366,000. Think about that. She's in a 32% tax bracket between federal and state. She took home only $285,000 and that is less than half of what she made in the business in terms of gross revenue. So more so why tax planning and advisory is really, really important for her. So her income before any tax strategies was $368,000. The first strategy that we used for her is what I like to call pulling cash tax-free from your business. That's right. The business gives you cash. It's not an income. It's not a distribution. It's cash that it gives you and you don't pay any tax on it. And that tax strategy is called an accountable plan and an Augusta tax strategy. Let me break that down for you. An accountable plan is basically an arrangement that you are allowed to have with your business where your business reimburses you for expenses that you incurred on behalf of the business tax-free. Now you might say, well, Boris, obviously, you know, I'm going to have business expenses on my personal account and the business can reimburse me. That's correct. But a council plan also allows you to reimburse yourself as a business owner 
for using your home even if you have another location right if you have an office a uh, what do you call it an, a warehouse or a storefront or whatever that may be as long as you do your administrative duties at your home and you have an exclusive place in your home where you do all of that work you can reimburse yourself for home office using a council plan a council plan is just an arrangement that allows you to do that on top of that if you own a home you can also reimburse yourself uh, for depreciation of that portion of your home office so yes this is a home office reimbursement you can only do this if you have a corporation and in her case she picked to be an s corporation and now she's able to reimburse herself using an account or plan the second thing over here is that she also used what's called an augusta tax strategy an augusta tax strategy separate from the home office allows you to pay yourself rent for using your home if you're using your home for business meetings meetings with clients or vendors this is in replacement of a conference room so because tracy is in a line of a business where she needs to have a conference room for certain meetings for signing certain deals and contracts instead of renting out a conference room somewhere else she uses her home as that and she properly documents everything none of the tax strategies ever learned whether in this video or any other videos or anything that you read online or scroll through your feed should be used without proper documentation and assistance from your tax advisor so using the account plan and augusta tax strategy she was able to reimburse yourself herself over the course of the year thirteen thousand seven hundred and five dollars and that saved her five thousand seven hundred and forty two dollars in taxes this strategy alone it didn't take her any extra work but the way we set everything up for her and had meetings with her on a quarterly basis as her tax advisor made sure that she captured this deduction and that put fifty seven hundred dollars in her pocket the next thing is s corporation owner health insurance eighteen thousand nine hundred fifteen dollars in deduction now let me explain to you if you own an s corporation and you're like oh yeah i deduct my s corporation health insurance no problem i do it i take it as a deduction this is a good deal great no if you're not putting it through your w-2 not only are you not allowed to take that deduction but at the same time you qualify for extra savings on your payroll taxes so her insurance premiums are about nineteen thousand dollars a year by including it as part of her w-2 number one she triggers a deduction that is allowed number two because it's part of her w-2 she does not pay payroll taxes on those premiums let me explain to you let's use an example if your salary in your business is a hundred thousand dollars and your health insurance premiums are twenty thousand dollars well guess what you pay payroll taxes generally at a hundred thousand dollars but because you are including your health insurance premiums as part of your salary you only pay payroll taxes on eighty thousand dollars that's an extra 15 percent in savings and that's why she has a ten thousand eight hundred nineteen dollars saved now it has to be implemented properly documented properly included on your payroll and one thing i didn't mention is that when you own an s corporation if you own more than two percent which most of the small businesses own more than two percent this tax strategy will work perfectly for you okay a lot of business owners that i speak to on the phone like ah oh, what what no i pay out of my own pocket because i've got it on you know on a marketplace and i don't want to pay for my employees hey even if you don't have health insurance for your employees like a group plan but you paid for yourself you can qualify for this deduction so definitely speak to your tax advisor about using this tax deduction and if you only have a tax preparer who puts the right numbers in the right boxes i can guarantee you right now you are over paying in taxes please get yourself a tax advisor hey if you don't have a tax advisor put in the comment i need a tax advisor okay cool now before we continue a very quick break hey thank you so much for watching the video very quickly if you don't mind i want to ask for your help i need your help i want other business owners just like you that will benefit from a video like this to catch this video the best thing that you can do for me please either the like the video or even say something in the comments because that really helps the youtube algorithm 
when they when it sees a lot of engagement to push the video to other uh, <laughs> to other business owners just like yourself or better yet subscribe to the channel would be much appreciated thank you again now let's get back to the tax strategy all right welcome welcome back now another thing in uh, another tax strategy which I'm not gonna spend way too much time on it but I am gonna put it in the description for you guys and that it should also pop up somewhere here is PTET tax strategies I do have a separate video on it where I discuss it in a lot more detail but basically PTET is a pass-through entity taxation it was passed in many states in response to tax cuts and tax cuts and jobs act we have a limitation of how much state income taxes you can deduct that limitation is only ten thousand dollars this is a voluntary tax payable to your state when you pay that tax you get a credit which is a wash but now that creates an additional tax deduction for you so you see tracy was able to deduct eighteen thousand nine hundred forty six dollars using this strategy saving her seven thousand nine hundred thirty eight dollars putting it in her pocket and a lot of accountants that i personally know whether the tax advisors tax planners whatever that may be a lot of them do not know many details about this tax strategy because it's new it's only been about around a couple of years it has some some quirks attached to it like you have to apply for it it's a voluntary election and so forth we do all of that we did all of that for tracy and like hey tracy don't worry about it we'll take care of it just make sure you follow through on the things that you need to do and bam guess what that put almost eight thousand dollars in her pocket so if you do not have a PTET tax strategy and I have a video about it, it should be in the description below. Please make sure you get that for yourself as soon as possible. Like I can't emphasize enough how easy the ta this tax strategy is and how this tax strategy can save you tons of money on taxes. Okay. The next one is a W2 401k. Now, here's the thing. A lot of business owners say, oh, you know what? I'm not going to open up a 401k for me, for myself or my business because then I have to put money away for my employees. That is true, but that is also wrong. Here's the thing. If you open up a 401k for your business, the only amount you're liable to put away for your employees is either 3 or 4%, depending on how you set up your plan. Now, that doesn't stop you putting money away from your paycheck which is called a deferral and your employees can do that you see in 2022 the deferral limit was twenty thousand five hundred dollars that means that Tracy took from her paycheck twenty thousand five hundred dollars and put it into the 401k any employee that works for her can do the same thing up to twenty thousand five hundred and put it into the 401k without it affecting Tracy or her business and without business having to match that because Tracy is over the age of 50 she was actually able to put away $27,000 into her 401k. One of the things that she told me about during our initial con um, conversation, she said, you know, building a retirement is really important for me. I want to make sure I have a good retirement set up. And um, I'm looking to, you know, I'm looking into setting up a 401k, but I don't know how to do it. And really, if I should, is it going to save me money in taxes? Well, it's putting in $11,300 in her pocket every year. And if she's reinvesting that money in her business, she's probably making a lot more of it. So, but what's important is that this deferral of $27,000 needs to be included on your W-2. Some businesses set it up, send money to the institution, right? The financial institution who set up their uh, 401k and it's not on W-2. Oh man, it creates so many problems. If you have a retirement account for your business already set up and you're sending money off and it's not part of your W-2, you're missing out on some opportunity at the same time you're missing out on some compliance so make sure this right here puts uh, eleven thousand dollars in Tracy's uh, account now before we continue into these two next two tax strategies her income before these deductions was three hundred sixty eight thousand dollars we dropped her income to hundred to two hundred eighty nine thousand dollars that's about eighty thousand dollar drop right yep it's about eighty thousand dollar drop uh, from these deductions but we don't end there because it's not only the deductions that save you money on taxes there's some other things that save you money on taxes when you're an S corporation owner one of them is being a reasonable compensation so you see if Tracy did not pick to be an S corporation she would have ended up paying self-employment taxes which is the payroll taxes 
on the entire $366,000. But because she took out a reasonable compensation from her business and the IRS says, hey, if you have an S corporation, you've got to pay yourself a reasonable compensation. Now, some business owners abuse this and that is wrong. Meaning, they're like, you know what? I make a $500,000 profit in my business. I'm only going to pay myself $10,000 salary. Like, you know, so like, why should I pay anything more? Why do I not pay the extra payroll tax? IRS says, no, 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 no. This is not why we created an S corporation. As a matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen, when you file your S corporation, if you pay attention, there's line seven that says officer compensation, IRS, it's a system. When you file your tax return, it looks at that number and compares it to your business code, which is NCAIS code, I think that's what, uh, NACIS code, uh, North America, NACIS code, uh, NACIS business code, and says, hey, is this salary reasonable to the industry that they reported? So you want to make sure you have a reasonable compensation and and convert your business to an S corporation. If you're not an S corporation yet, by the way, I do have a video here on YouTube exactly how to file for an S corporation. So it should be in the description below as well. Now, S corporation reasonable compensation, that is, uh, oh, so because she paid herself a reasonable compensation, she did not end up paying extra 15.3% taxes on the entire net profit. She only paid it on her compensation. Guess how much it saved her? $10,594 on tax, okay? Now, another thing that she does really well that she listens to us as a tax advisors is that she pays her quarterly estimated taxes. Now, some people choose not to pay their quarterly estimated taxes. Some business owners are like, you know what? I don't want to pay this tax. I want to instead reinvest my money into the business. And that's what I want to do. If I have to pay penalty at the end of the year, then I will pay it. That is your choice, okay? Tracy, on the other hand, that is not what she wants to do. And she does not look, uh, like to pay penalties and she's pretty comfortable paying her estimated taxes. So Tracy paid, uh, excuse me, when Tracy paid her estimated taxes, she saved about $2,795 on underpayment penalty, okay? Overall, giving her a savings of $49,201 for 2022. And I'm sure this number is going to stay either consistent or even go higher going 2023, 2024, and 2025, utilizing and implementing that these tax strategies. Now, as her business grows, as Tracy's business grows, she'll probably be there'll probably be more opportunities for her to use other tax strategies. You see, this is not all in all tax strategies. There's a lot more tax strategies available for business owners just like you and just like Tracy, okay? As the business grows, opportunities grow. Tax savings opportunities, tax strategy opportunities. Our a tax code is over 80,000 pages long. And that means you, the business owner, can use the tax code to your advantage. I don't know if you know this fact or, or not, but most of the tax code is really written as to how to pay less in taxes and how to pay more. Everything is written about taking a deduction and making sure you take it properly. If you meet this criteria, that criteria, blah, 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 blah. That's like in a plain language, okay? Now, if you like my video, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel, like the video, share it with a business owner that you think will benefit from this video. I hope this video was really helpful. Let me know in the comments what you think. Like I said, make sure to subscribe. Hey, hey till the next time.